Good morning. Good morning, church. I know y'all are still visiting. We gave Christina to add the uh, more minutes to the visiting time in the morning. It's good to have y'all this morning. I'm excited to preach, man. I feel good this morning. Y'all look good, man. The Lord showed up this morning. I'm just so excited. We had a change in our nation, and man, we got family here today. We're fixing to preach, boy. Y'all just want to sit back and hear some gospel and just get your heart right. Soak that in. Soak the blood of Jesus, this, this series in, and I'm telling you, it'll transform your life. So let's get into it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful service and all these beautiful people. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in worship and your presence still here right now. We thank you, Lord, as the word goes out. That we preach the gospel, Lord, that lives are changed, set free, and healed today. That as we lay hands on the sick, that you show up, Father, in power. That, that, that no more infirmity is allowed in our bodies. No more, uh, no more strongholds are allowed in our minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, today the blood covers it all. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Y'all still remember that old gospel song? I sang it last week. Y'all going to get round two again. Y'all were like, I saw Eric back there. He was like, ooh. My ears, but what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And and then it goes on how precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. You know, he makes, Jesus just, he takes the stain of sin that happened in your life and the bad things that you've decided and that have happened to you that the enemy has put in your life and he takes those stains away and he washes you with your blood because when you believe what he did for you, all of a sudden you're swept clean and you're white as wool and you can move into that day with fresh grace because nothing in your past defined you because Jesus said, I already finished it all. This is good. That's week two. We're going to reiterate. I want to get it in your spirit. So we're going to cover one point once again from last week. So let's flow. I want you all to learn that song. Sing it in the morning. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Can I share something with you? The devil attacks me hard on Saturdays. You can ask my wife. It's been like that all year. I decided yesterday morning to get up, and I pled the blood over my life in every situation yesterday. And let me explain what happened. He did not come around. You can take it as you like, but he did not come fool with me yesterday. I did not have enemy attacks. I did not have the laughing. I did not have the attacks at night and the sweat. I didn't have the body attacks. Listen, I know it works because I said if I'm going to preach it, I'm going to instigate it. and I'm going to put it into effect this week. And guess what? I got the freedom today that I haven't had in months. Because the blood washes away it all. And when you don't know what to do, the blood calls down and gives you that answer because he did it all on the cross. And when he shed that blood, that was the key. You see, we preach the truth here. It sets people free. Listen, there's tremendous power in the blood of Jesus. Nobody preaches this no more. They're scared to preach the cross, the blood. Look, it's what, it's what the gospel is based upon. He said the cross is where it's at and the blood is the victory. That is it. First John 1 John 1.7. Look, dude, I'm so pumped up today that y'all, I'm, as I preach, y'all are getting delivered from strongholds in your mind and the past. And then when we lay hands, body will be healed today too. God said he's going to touch. He wants to touch people today. Jesus wants to touch you today. Don't be scared. First John 1 John 1.7. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, come on with this word now, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us all from sin. Now that's a good thing for an old rounder like me. Y'all don't understand. I was in some dark Texas nasty street stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've just been a rounder my whole life. You can ask anybody that's known me. But one day, I quit decided not to be religious. I decided I didn't want to take my life, but I was fixing to. But Jesus said, my blood is calling down from heaven to save you today. And he did, dude. I put the pistol up and then I'm up here preaching four years later. I don't know what to tell you. It works. And verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. You know everybody's a sinner. Y'all might as well not even lie about that one. 
Take your butt outside. You're going to lie about that and come back in and we'll pray for you. He demonstrated his own love for you while you were sinning. He still died for you. He watched you sin the whole time. He created you and he said, I'm still going to do it because one day they're going to see the truth and then they're going to come to me and I'll have them as my children for eternity. Wow, come on somebody. You see, here lies the power in the blood to overcome it all. It's the power to save. It's the power to heal. It's the power to deliver. It's the power to come overcome any adversity. The power to bring full freedom and full hope. Power to break every chain of the devil. No weapon formed against you shall prosper against the blood. And power to transform your life and you will have a brand new eternal destiny. All you got to do is believe that he died on the cross for you, was risen on the third day, and then his blood takes away your sins, and that he's prepared a place for you. The gospel is the good news. And just soak that in today and listen, because this church is based off the gospel gospel. You get it in your spirit twice. If the heart of the gospel is the cross, oh come on somebody, then the blood is the life force. Blood's always the life force. The, the life force is, you, you live because of the blood God gave you. You, you have to have blood transfers because your body can't operate with not the specific amount or specific type of blood that he built for your body. You got to understand some things. It's only the only hope to the fading world and it took blood. It took blood. It always takes blood. It just does. That's how it works. Listen, Matthew 4, 23, Jesus is going through all of Calvary. Because you know what? Before the blood of Jesus was shed on Calvary's cross, Jesus already brought the kingdom to the world. Oh, you're not in the kingdom. You're in the midst of the kingdom, as it says in Luke 21, 17. He goes, you're not just around the kingdom. You're in the midst of it. Now, that power came down from heaven, and it says, Matthew 4, 23, Jesus was going through all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease, every kind of sickness among the people. That says every kind. Why are you walking around he, uh, not healed? Where's your faith at? We've been pumping faith in here for four months, bro. Look, you're healed because you need to up your faith game. You need, you're not healed. You need to up your faith game. And it says this, The news spread about uh, him, Jesus, throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering from various diseases, pains, demeniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And it says he healed them all. He said, look, if you want to be healed, that's fine. It's simple. The gospel's simple. Step up here, get healed. Jesus says, I'm going to heal you by your stripes. Sin no more. You'd be healed then. If I would have went on the next day popping 30 more Vicodins, would I, would I have been healed? No, I'd have been laying there with my tongue hanging out in a coffin with smoke coming out of my throat and our head. You don't understand. The blood reaches out. The blood reaches out when you don't know what to do. And what was Jesus' message when he came to earth? It says in Matthew 12, 28, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. He said, I'm here now. I'm here now. He said, I'm here today too. You've got to decide if you want to get those strongholds in your mind gone forever and your body healed. That's going to be up to you. But Jesus says, I already did it on the cross. And to accomplish it once and for all defeat of the power of darkness, he said, I did that too. Jesus Christ, the sinless, perfect Savior, went to the cross of Calvary, was crucified, and he said, I'm going to totally absorb every sin that you've ever committed. Even the one you're going to do tomorrow, Rose. That's how much he loves you. Now, that's pure love. You don't understand. But don't take that grace for granted, though, because you can't keep living like that. Just accept the grace and take it and just jump into your new life because that old life didn't give you nothing anyway. Who's preaching now? And after the monumental universal changing event of the cross, the gospel message becomes a message centered solely on the cross. The, the gospel message right there from the Bible went just like this. Cross, 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 cross. Why? I don't know. Let's look. See, you don't find the term gospel of kingdom used anywhere but in the four gospels. And then the cross changed it all for them because you don't hear about it any. When the cross hit, when those men saw what Jesus did on that cross, when they rejected him and still saw the love for them, they went to their grave and died martyrs, nasty deaths, never backing off that truth. So you can't tell me the gospel ain't real because there's not a man in the world that would back down from that and then have them and their wives killed, crucified upside down, tarred and everything and stuck to it all the way till the end. You tell me this gospel ain't true? They saw what they saw and he woke up out of that tomb and his blood did drop for you and me. They took it to their grave. 
And then and it's still, we're preaching it deal because they said, look, it happened. Period. We'll take it to the grave. You can kill us. I don't care what you do, but you're not going to change the mind and we're not going to relent that Jesus and this gospel is 100% pure, that the cross was the means and the blood is the key. See, this is all a sight to see. And the apostles stood upon the truth on horrible deaths. These men never wavered. They all died horrible deaths because they knew Jesus was truly the Savior. They knew it was really true. That his blood was that precious. That the cross, that he died for them. That he carried that sucker. And he suffered in shock and never quit for you. Bore everything on his body for you. And then we reject him for 30, 40, 50 years and still don't want the power when we do finally hear it. Well, what did he come to the cross to do then, sweetie? you got to believe or you're going to hell. You understand? How's that for simplicity? The cross, Galatians 6, 14. But may it never be that we would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I've been crucified with Christ. It is I that no longer live, but Christ liveth in me. I live this life in the flesh by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. His blood said, I did it all for you. All you've got to do is call out and believe. That's it. Come on, somebody give me an amen. You see, these apostles, uh, these early believers meant it. 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The world, may, the world says that faith don't work. you got to self-improve yourself. No, 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 no. The Bible says you got to die to self. You got to pick up your cross and leave that old life. You can't improve yourself staying in the old life. There's no blood that cleanses you then. What did you get sweat from? What did you get white as wool from? Why are you, are you walking away white as sheep or are you still walking away bloodstained? From sin. Because Jesus' blood has to come cover that. Because you're in a bind if he doesn't, you understand? That's how it works, heaven and hell. It's blood's that important. I would say the blood is all of it. I would say that the blood of Jesus is all and covers all and is all. And he did it and shed it every single drop of it for mankind and for your family. That bloody cross was a dynamic tool to change it all forever. You never forget that. And in saying that, we're sinned about it. Paul said grace abounded much more because he knew that the cross was that powerful and the blood that the grace was going to cover with that sin's butt. And the answer is obvious. God's grace is always greater, right? Sin can't hang with God's grace. Look at the world. 86% voted when everybody said that this world is going in the woke direction. No, 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 no. God said, no, I'm the God of the quick work. I'll take the, I'll take the, I'll take the Mormons and put them in their little uh, horses and I'll send them to the vote for the first time. You see, God has people available to move when he needs them to move. Y'all are seeing the big picture. You got to see vision. He saved a nation with people that hadn't even voted in almost 100 years. He's the God of the quick work. You come here and you, you were in the past and you got all this stuff and, and all these nasty things that the devil cries to come torment you every day. You tell him the blood of Jesus done cover that all. And then he can't fool with you ever again. That's the weapon. That's the armor you put on in Ephesians 6. Put on the blood, feet to head, and let it rip and tell the enemy to get off your butt. Only the precious blood of Jesus has that power to free you from the worst blows dealt with you in life and then you can't even remember them because he cleaned you up that good. Come on, somebody. We're going to preach in 24 and 25 or we're going to sit down and be little, you know, let the world take over. The kingdom will rise. Let his blood wash over you today as I preach. Somebody thank Jesus for that. Thank him this morning. Do you know that poison that poison always has an antidote? You ever took zoology and chemistry? Poison always has an antidote, whether it's earthly or man-made. There's an antidote to poison. Listen, you've been sitting in poison your whole life, but now today, you're here in the remedy, baby. The blood of Jesus comes, and he will wash you away, and all that sin will just go away and be dumped out in that ditch and covered up, and he said, I'm going to spread it from the east to the west in the sea of forgiveness because my blood already did it for you 2,024 years ago. 
1 Corinthians 15, 1, Now I make known to you, bro, the gospel which I preach to y'all, which also you received and which we stand, by which also you saved, you will hold fast the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Do not believe this in vain today. You will be set free. For I deliver to you, this is it, the first importance I also received, Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. Come on, somebody. He was buried and then he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. And that's the creed I live by. That's the sect I am. I'm called the sect that's called the way, the truth, and the life, and the government, and the Romans. They never understood it. The world don't comprehend it. But God says, my blood makes you part of the family of God today, and you got nothing to worry about. Oh, we preaching like a beast this morning. True belief and ID. You got to ID. You got to identify with the death, burial, and resurrection. You can't just talk about it. You can't talk about Santa Claus and then not believe maybe you heard something on the roof. You got to understand that if you read that verse, you best believe it because that is the truth that will set you free and change your life. It's the antidote to the poison. It takes guilt away. It takes shame away. It takes condemnation away. It takes the nastiness away. It takes the mistakes away. Jesus' blood covers it all. Colossians 1, 20, and through him, oh, some, man, this right here, to reconcile all things to himself. He said, I come to make the broken whole today. I came to reconcile the sinner back to the Father because the cross of the blood was for you. I bore your grief, carried your sorrow, wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was dripping that day and by your stripes that where blood was coming down, your body can be healed if you just believe that Jesus can do it. Boy, y'all ain't caught me slipping like this in four months because I got the anointing back, baby, because the devil, the blood, the devil cannot touch the blood of Jesus. It's called tremendous power. Not power. It's called the tremendous power in the universe. That's the only thing that can flip a soul. It's the only thing that can heal your heart. It's the only thing that can heal cancer. It's the only thing that can take away all that destruction that happened to you. And I'm so sorry. But Jesus said, I was watching and I already did it for you. Just let me take it away today. Oh, the blood of Christ deals with sin and the cross deals with self. Don't you ever forget it. You ain't going to prove yourself. You got to pick up your little cross, deny yourself and follow Jesus. You accept the blood. Forgive, but you die to self on the cross. You got to learn that you're forgiven, so you got to forgive. The blood only works when you forgive. Then you're forgiven. Yes. Let it go, man. Them haters, peace. Love on them. For real, dude, preach rich, uh, pray rich mercy in their life that God will reach them. They can't phase you. I always figure the three more important messages taught by the apostles after the resurrection were the message of the cross we just proved, the pleading the blood of Jesus, and guess what? That it's the power to overcome. That's all you need to know. Are y'all good? Yes. You see my point? The central to the message of the cross that gives you victory is the blood of Jesus, and it's central to spiritual warfare. All you got to do is plead the blood, and the enemy must flee. Amen. He got to go. He has to go. He cannot, that's one thing. You can talk all religious mess and everything when you start pleading the blood of Jesus. I, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I plead the blood of your son over this situation and I ask you to intervene by faith. Look, he already finished it for me. I need your help. I need the blood to come down and answer me. You will not have issues if you learn to grow up and have a little faith. Just because other preachers don't preach about the cross and blood don't mean that you can't initiate, initiate it into your life. Worried about them other people. Shoot, this is the house right here that the Lord says I'm projecting what I need to project out of. That's why you're sitting here because He loves you. He held, hold, He's holding you in the truth. He's not letting you go. He's not letting you be sifted because you wanted to, but He's holding you in the truth. Because He's holding you, because He loves you, because the blood always holds you. The blood always gives that. There's always a way back to Jesus by the blood. You understand? All you've got to do is bring it back. I got to get an amen or something. Amen. And I'll tell you, you think I'm kidding. It's simple. Revelations 12, 11, Read it. It says they overcome him, which is the devil, because the blood of the lamb. They overcome him because the blood of the lamb. 
Revelation 12, they overcame the devil because of the blood of the Lamb. I overcame the devil yesterday. Why? Because of the blood of the Lamb. I overcame the devil this morning. Why? Because of the blood of the Lamb. When he tried to wake me up at 4 o'clock, oh no, I started spraying in tongues and I pled the blood and I went softly back to sleep and Jesus was with me. You got to understand, I'm preaching for real two weeks. Think I'm wasting y'all's time for two weeks. I preach a series in like seven weeks, bro. Or seven months. Listen, I know where the power lies. It's the blood for me. Point number two, y'all with me? The blood atones. Do you know what atonement means? Does anybody know what that means? I'll explain it. The precious blood of our Lord not only serves as atonement for our sins, but it devastates the demonic realm. Atonement means it swapped places. He took your sin debt. All you got to do is believe. He atoned. He covered it. It's just covering your sins with his blood. Atonement. He's covering it. Listen, but it destroys the demonic realm. Who has demonic stuff that comes fools with your mind? Don't raise your hand, but I know there's like seven of y'all in here. He already showed me. You see, y'all going to get set free today. But listen to point two because you ain't going to get freedom if you don't hear the word to get set free. Every Christian must know and identify with the message of the cross and the blood of Jesus. You have to know that. You have to know the power in the blood. It's, it's just there. If not, you simply will not live a victorious life. You will be defective, lacking power, and your testimony will be sorry. You walk around with power. I thank God you might be saved. And if you ain't saved today, we're going to do that too. But if you're saved walking with no power, you haven't initiated the blood of Jesus to defeat the enemy yet. Y'all just walking around praying like, oh, Jesus, I need your help today. No, you get control of that. And you get them scriptures. I just gave you six of them. There's four more coming. You get them scriptures changing your life when you put the blood to it. Say amen. God's way is not to improve self like we talked about. It's to crucify yourself. Oh, pastor, now you're picking. No, I'm telling you the truth. You know, it, it says to pick up your little crosses, deny your little self, and to follow the king. That's what it tells me. It says in Luke 20, you want to read it? And he was saying to all them, if anyone wishes, Luke 9, 23, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. I'm just preaching the gospel this morning. I'm setting it up. Y'all listen. Listen. You see, men and women, we are just sinners lost without any hope of renewal to God's intervention. And when God intervenes, the first thing He does is you have to be born again. The old man has to die. New self has to come in. Old, new creation has to be raised up by Christ. Old creation must go. Are we here now with the gospel? John 3.3 3, An old man or old you, the Bible calls it, must die. This is why interest in, entrance into Christianity begins only by being born again, by believing what Jesus did for you. Jesus told John, uh, I mean Nicodemus in John 3, you must be born again. Not of a woman, you must be born again of fire and spirit. Are you with me? That's just all it means. John 3, 3, truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you haven't accepted Christ today, you may have been sitting here for four years, we're going to give you a chance, but that's the first, because the blood can't work if you're not born again. Okay. This is where many people... Now, the blood works to make people born again. Let me rephrase that because I don't want y'all taking away bad doctrine. The blood only works when Christians apply it like the Word says to apply it. Then the victory comes. I had to clarify myself. Are we good? Rod, you good? Look, self has not died and it, it is still very much alive. Therefore, the new man created in Christ Jesus cannot emerge. How can he emerge? How can that new plant emerge if it's still choked out by the old life? There's no creation there. You've got to die. You've got to let that blood wash over you, make you white as lamb and white as snow and white as wool. That way you're a new creation. You're going to make mistakes, but he said, my grace is more efficient. Sin can't whoop it. It's okay. Don't make mistakes. Be more like Jesus every day, but you will. Romans 6, 5, listen to me. I'm preaching now. I want you to pay attention. For if we become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
It's pretty cool. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin for he who has died is free from sin. So you can't, the blood can't give you that victory every day to defeat the enemy unless you become born again first and let that blood wash and cleanse you. And, and you have to come back to Jesus and do that continually. We did skip communion this, this, this Sunday because we're praying for the sick at the end, but next week we will have communion. After the two-week series, we'll have communion. And I want y'all to really uh, take that serious. You understand? All right, here we go. The blood, the blood, though, forgives sin, but the cross crucifies self. You see, the blood's going to forgive you sin, but you have to make a step to die to self and change your life. It's just changing your life. You're not going to be no perfect, you know, uh, clean underwear, goofy-looking, uh, conservative Christian overnight. I don't even want to be that anyway. I mean, I've got tattoos, and I'm barely, I've looked pretty nice for all year for what I usually wear. I don't want to be conformed to anything. I don't want to be conformed to the world or religion. I want to be conformed to one thing, the way. The gospel conforms me. That's it. That way, that truth, and that life conforms me. And I stay in the middle of it, and I put myself, surround myself with people uh, in my church that believe the same as I do too. Are we good? You see, Jesus did it all for you. All you got to do is walk by faith and live it. The precious blood of our Lord not only serves as atonement, covering for every sin you've ever committed, but it still will devastate the demonic realm at the same time. It washes away your sins and it takes the enemy out at the same time. I would initiate that in your life. Amen. Like most things in the Spirit, faith is active ingredient in claiming the blood of Jesus or using it as a weapon against the enemy. You've got to use it as a weapon. Uh, we will go over this a little bit more. Look, <clears throat> you see, blood is precious to man because it is precious to God. Blood is the life force. And in the Old Testament, we talked about last, uh, last week that they had to kill animals. It, it, they killed all kinds of animals. They had to be perfect animals. They had to kill them to atone for people's sins. And a priest had to do it. It was nasty, messy. It took forever. I mean, it took, it was just horrendous. But Jesus said, when he died, he said, I finished all that. He said, the veil ripped. You don't need no priest. You go straight to the Father through my name because of my precious blood. He was the lamb. That, that he was the ultimate lamb. And it says in Genesis 3.24, we're going to reiterate from last week for like two minutes. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Now, that he did not, that took, that took a killing. That took a dying. That took something dying that God had to kill and then that took blood to cover them. Wow. Now, if you flip it over to the picture of Jesus, come on, somebody. He was the perfect lamb, is what John the Baptist said when he was coming, and he said this, his blood covers it all. It was just a picture. Always been a picture of Jesus since Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation to the end. When it says amen, you got to see this. You see, to obtain skins, there had to be shedding of blood. Everything had, the sin cannot be atoned back in the day without blood. Are we clear? See, only, only blood can provide a covering for mankind. That's why. Only blood can cover. The, 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 he had to get a priest and Levites and all that stuff to do it. God, God designed that because Jesus hadn't showed up yet. They were looking for Jesus. That was all faith projected. Forward faith, and then we got the Gospels. Backward faith. Come on, somebody. Actually, Jesus was in it, but after that. So capture that hope today. It's the blood that, I'm telling you, it's the blood that cleanses you from all the hurt, and then it just takes away all the grief, and the peace hits you when it cleanses over you, and then your future starts building through Christ. Yeah. Woo! Point number three, we rolling with gas today. We cooking, baby. Point number three, blood sacrifice. Two-week series. We got to get in our spirit. You see, Genesis 4 again. God respected Abel's sacrifice of a lamb, but Cain tried to bring fruit and vegetables. He said, it don't work that way, dude. My law is it takes blood. Cain didn't realize that. So maybe you need to understand how precious and how dynamic and how, the, the, how miraculous, wonder-working power that rests in Christ's blood and capture that weapon to defeat the enemy from now on. 
plead the blood over it. It's simple. You see, Cain misunderstood, as many Christians continue to misunderstand, the importance of the blood. It's precious. Do you understand? It'll change your life. They do not preach the gospel that demands identification with the cross, but only just believe in Jesus. They just said, just believe that he died on the cross. No, you got to say, look, that blood needs to come down. That blood, I need something in my life right now. You call out to your Savior, and he will answer. That's what he came to do. When Moses led the people of God out of Egypt, God demonstrated the power of the blood like we talked about. This time, God showed us that blood protects even from death. The blood will protect your family from death. If the blood of Jesus washes over your family and they get saved, you have got the biggest miracle you could ever get in your entire life. Do you understand me? Yes. See, I'm preaching for real today, bro. Let's say no fluff. You're going to get it in your heart and you'll never be able to leave and say, man, I didn't know about the blood of Jesus, but now I got the power, baby. That's what Shambach said. The blood of Jesus, I got the power to overcome. He said it every night. But it's true. He knew it and he preached it continually. And people got healed. And I watched people's feet grow out in Dallas, Texas, underneath a tent because a guy brought an extra pair of shoes. The blood of Jesus always answers. Verse 13. Exodus 12, 13. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when you see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall or destroy you. Now that's a promise. That is a promise. You've got to start initiating the blood. Put your blood on the house. Get that oil out. Start praying for your kids when they're sleeping. Start praying for the uh, uh, hood rat dogs you got. Start looking at them bills and claiming the blood of Jesus over. Start looking at your body every morning and start dancing in front of Jesus and say, the blood heals me. The end of the day, I'm still walking. I'm still preaching like a beast. Because his blood answers me every day. He gives me the perfect amount of bread. Give me today your daily bread. That bread comes in so many ways, but the blood covers it. That's what the bread is. God instructed Moses to have people kill a perfect lamb, one for each household of 15 people, and to sprinkle blood on his doorpost. Would y'all like to do that? Go on. Go on. Uh, Augie, with your little uh, uh, suit on and go buy you that little goat and take him home and do all that stuff. Thank you for Jesus. He finished it and made it a way. He's the way. See, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life because you ain't got to fool with that no more because my blood covered it all. Done. Let's move on. You see, blood is important. We covered it for two weeks at this point. Death is an enemy. Death is your enemy. Especially if you're not saved today. Death is your high enemy. Eternity's real. You see, death is our enemy. But it ain't an enemy no more when you accept Christ because, look, watch this. You see what else his blood did? Oh, come on, somebody. 1 Corinthians 15, 25. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be smoked is death. He'll crush Satan's head. He already got the keys. He already got his people coming with him. All you got to do is believe and he saved us. Thank you, Jesus, for that. His blood's still covering because we're in the age of the grace post-cross. Listen to me. Jesus said today, you believe this and my blood will change your life from here on out to eternity till you come and rest by my side. I'm preaching the power to set you free. The life of Jesus is in His blood. The life is in the blood. Life of Jesus is in the Savior's blood. It is the life of blood that turns back death, that crushes death, and I just proved it, defeats death at the end. Is this good news? John 1, 29, I'm almost done. The next day, He saw Jesus coming to Him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the entire world. There ain't nothing you've ever done that could turn your love back from Jesus, bro. You could have done the sorriest things. Let me explain something to you. I was a dirty piece of trash. You don't understand. I have no right to be up here. But His blood covers me. And when that happens, you have the full right to do anything with the power of the kingdom 
behind you now. Come on. Look. He took the price for me and you. Just believe in him today. It was the, it was the ultimate sacrifice. But he said, I, had, I am the way. I am the way. Oh, I'm so excited. We got our canvases in yesterday. They're huge. And they're just the way. All 25, we're the way. I'm so excited. Let's wrap this baby up so y'all can go home. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm going to wrap this up. Look, I want you to pay real close attention real quick. When sin enters your minds or the emotions, it causes damages and defilements in your soul. You understand? Not only that, those sins can affect your body too, physically. But the main part is they affect your soul. It's called soul sickness. And the Bible tells us that God demonstrated His own love for us while we were yet sinners. So He knew we all would have that soul sickness. You see, we were all nastily uh, infected by sin. And so that soul sickness is something that's real in your life. You understand? It affects your mind. It affects your heart. It affects your body. It affects your emotions. It affects your future. You live in fear and you don't have peace. Jesus says, I'm here to fix this, so listen this morning. Listen close. What, what, we can even, the soul sickness, and it's really no different than physical sickness. You know, becoming sick becomes a bacteria or a virus and it infects and enters the body. But sin wreaks havoc the same way in life. It just does. It just, sin comes in, it leaves a nasty stain upon you, and then you can't get free of it unless you do one thing. You got to believe what Christ did for you and let His blood wash you. Are y'all with me? Perhaps the biggest infectors of the mind and emotions are these top four that so many things Jesus wants to heal you from. I've, I've picked four, but there's thousands. There's millions of sins. But these top four, I think, that uh, in this church, and the, the Lord wants to share something with you. Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, and fear is what the Lord said to you. Nailed you, didn't I? You see, these four issues, these four issues must be dealt with to have full freedom. There's only one way to deal with those. You can go to a psychologist. You can, there's self-help. You, that's fine. I'm all about that too. But you can't do it unless you die to yourself and change and believe that the only power to do it is the blood of Jesus. And then when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it grows you and teaches you. And He's there with you consistently. That's the only way. Because that way... When you reach out and the Holy Spirit is with you because that's the promise Jesus gave you, that's His Spirit, He says then, all you got to do is call out to the blood and I'll answer every time, but I'm right there with you. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this beautiful news? You see, that means your body and mind this morning. I'm done, dude. That's 1130. I'm fixing to go to the house. Mark 133. And the whole city had gathered at the door in 34. And he healed many who were ill with various diseases, cast out many demons, and was not permitting the demons to speak. I like that. Because they knew who he was. You start speaking into the enemy. Don't speak a lot to him. Don't even, but there's times in your life you got to tell him to get up off of you. Use the blood of Jesus at that moment and he must go. The Bible's clear. He must, the enemy must flee and you will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Is this good? Mark 6, 12, they went out and preached that men should repent too. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with all many sick people and healing them. You see, only Jesus can give you that freedom and only His blood now can do that for you today. So I suggest if you have any ailments in a little bit, in your body, in your mind, in your past, anything, anything, anything that's bothering you, I would come up here and get prayed for. There ought to be about 20 people up here today and I won't embarrass a soul. God wants to touch you today and Jesus says, I want to heal you today. Listen to me. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' His Son cleanses us all from sin. He can take it all from you. We are, we are all the same boat here. All sinners saved by grace. And then why don't we do it all together and just get, all get free today? Let that blood cleanse us over, bro. And then we move on to the next step and take, that, take this uh, hill country for Jesus. And if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But listen, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a very important you need, to, you need to quote that every single day. 
You need to build a repentant heart. That's how you become more like Christ. When you come to Him and recognize your sins at the end of the day and you say, Lord, I'm going to actually fess up because I messed up today. And you be real with Jesus. He'll meet you there and the blood covers it all. And He says He'll cleanse your, you, listen, all from all of it. Do you think I don't hit that altar before I get up here? I mean, hit that, uh, that, that couch back there in my office before I get up here? You best believe yourself, sir. I got, I got to get rid of some things from the week. You understand me? I got to get my heart right. I got to get up in here and say, Lord, you got to wash and cleanse me with your precious blood before I get up there because I'm not worthy. But then when I do it, you're worthy then because he said all you got to do is just come to him. Come on, somebody. That passage is another I quote daily. Cleanse from all unrighteousness. Amazing grace daily. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. That rich mercy and that amazing grace never stops failing me and it amazes me every single day when he comes through for me. Such powerful. I'm done. We are living in post-cross. It's an era called the age of grace. All you got to do is believe in what he did for you. That's a beautiful thing. The blood of Jesus has been shed for your forgiveness. It's been done. He said, I finished it 2,024 years ago, dude. Therefore, there is no power in the blood. Of, therefore, there is power, listen, in the blood of Jesus today that can take away all that sickness that's in your mind and in your body. And this applies to, this applies to all those bad things that happen to you too. And the bad moments that you put yourself in. Jesus said, I'm gonna, my blood's going to cover you so good. You ain't even going to remember half of them in due time. Come on, somebody. Unforgiveness, though, bitterness, anger, and fear, all they do is give the devil legal access to your life every day. If you hold on to those four things, you give him legal access to your mind, to your life, to your finances, to your relationships, and to your marriages, and that is not a good place to be. You've got to get rid of them things and let Jesus cleanse you today. You see, a lot of damage has been done to personal health, the well-being of marriages, relationships, families, friendships. That's why you do not allow the enemy to dominate your life. You plead the blood every single day and he must go. Jesus wants you to live free today. He wants, to, he wants you to live that great life he had planned for you. He didn't say it was going to be easy and rainbow farts every day and Skittles at the end of it and gold. But he did say, I give you peace and you ain't got to worry about nothing because I've already overcome it. My blood's done it. Wow. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's only one fount I know that can clean you up, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is here to set you free today. He loves setting people free. He came to do that. That was his only intention. He's up there interceding for you, praying for you. He said, I died on the cross for you. What else do you want? I'm pulling for you, baby boo. Those, are the, those that are saved. Maybe this message will call you to repentance for some things. Maybe you need to ask the Lord to bring uh, the blood and wash you of some things today and get a fresh start. That's okay. I do it every day, three times a day if you really want to know my business. <laughs> but I'm not ashamed to tell you that because I've always been a truthful pastor and that's just how I'm on roll, bro. The blood will save your life. Use it as a weapon, you understand? Let's wrap this up for real. I know I said it three times. If you want Jesus to lay hands on you today, if you want that touch of Christ, I'm just going to do this number. I don't even need to preach no more. You've heard the pure gospel message today. If you would like to get laid hands on for any infirmity in your body or your mind, or you want to know, or you want to get a fresh start with Christ today, or you want to accept Jesus today, please step up because this is the day. He's moving. Give me some oil and, a, and a, uh, uh, something for my breath. 